Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and following up on a video a few months ago highlighting seven monthly dividend stocks to pay your rent. And that video immediately became one of the most popular on the channel, but there was one thing I hated about it. You see, even with an amazing dividend yield of 9.7% on those seven stocks, you'd still need almost $250,000 invested to make a $2,000 monthly rent payment. And that's on a dividend yield more than six times the market average. If you've got a quarter of a million dollars stashed away in dividend stocks, you're worried about the color of the umbrella in your coconut drink, not about paying the rent. So for this video, I wanted to fix that problem. Make this a video anyone can use and show you the nine passive income ideas you can start today that are gonna cash flow fast. We'll be using the average rent for each state and revealing passive income strategies for each to pay that amount. Stick around to your state or watch to the end to see which income ideas make the most money. We're getting started, but you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I'll be using data from rentdata.org for a three bedroom apartment in each state. Now, if you've got too many kids and need more rooms, there is good news. Scientists think they've uncovered what causes babies, so you might want to look into that. We'll start with those passive income ideas to pay the rent of the least expensive states and work our way up from there. Now, these are all going to be ways to make money that won't involve constant work, but some do take time to develop. Now, I'm going to leave links in the description below for each video on how to develop each of these, but if you need faster cash, I'll leave a link to a side hustle video for ideas that make money immediately. Our first group, and God bless the cheap seats, we've got an average rent under $1,000 a month. So if you don't mind corn and cows, it's a great place to live. And the first way you're going to do that is by taking advantage of the shared economy. Now, most people have heard of Airbnb, right? The idea of renting out a room in your house to travelers, but this goes way beyond that. And most don't involve inviting Charles Manson to be a house guest. I'm talking apps like Rapify, where you can earn up to $450 a month for selling ad space on your car and just driving around like you normally do. Or letting someone use your driveway through neighbor.com for up to $150 a month. Renting out your car as little as seven days a month can net you as much as $10,500 a year, according to Turo.com. Nation, there is an app and passive income here for all levels of sharing, from renting a room to sharing your driveway or parking spot, to renting your car and even renting out your clothes, though I'm not sure I'm quite ready to let this guy wear my jeans yet. Now, most of these aren't going to get you to that $1,000 a month unless you're taking a more active role, but you can combine a couple of these more passive ones to build up your income. If you average, say, $250 a month from Rapify and $500 a month from renting your car a few days, and then the other couple hundred from your other apps, you've got your rent paid for with little or no work. I've just started using this next passive income strategy and really like how it's turning out, collecting interest on cryptocurrency platforms. There is a huge demand for lending cryptocurrency and stablecoins right now, so platforms like BlockFi are paying interest rates up to 8% on accounts. This is a lot like what traditional banks do with your savings, paying you interest and then loaning that money out on mortgages, except the rate BlockFi is paying out right now is more than 100 times that average 0.06% rate you get from the bank. And you don't have to be a believer in cryptocurrencies to use this as a passive income source. These are the rates BlockFi pays on different tokens, and you'll see the stablecoins like the USDC are paying the highest rates. Stablecoins are backed by assets like commercial paper and money market funds to hold their value to the US dollar. And you can see in this price chart, it stays almost exactly at that $1 each. Of the passive income ideas I'll highlight, this is one of the easiest. You can transfer directly from your bank into BlockFi and you'll earn interest daily from your crypto and stablecoin holdings. I earn just over $25 a day or about $750 a month from this source alone and, and that's interest on my stablecoins as well as my investments in Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'll leave a link to BlockFi in the description below. Check that out and get up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you open your account. We're moving on up for our next group, maybe not to that penthouse apartment in the sky, but to rents just over a thousand a month. I'm just getting started earning interest on crypto, so I wanted to share a passive idea that I've been using for quite a while, self-publishing on Amazon or shorter printables. And those of you in the community for a while, you know this is the income source that enabled me to go full-time with my online business. I've been self-publishing on Amazon since 2015 and tracking each month's income. And you can see here, even my first book, published six years ago, is still making money every single month. I average just over $1,500 a month through this self-publishing and have made over $123,000 total in that six years. Best of all, though, that first book took just a few months to write and was cash flowing immediately. 
from there, I was able to grow that income source to over $1,000 a month within a year. So this is gonna be one of the fastest on our passive income list. Honestly, folks, everyone has a book idea in them because you have your own unique set of experiences and talents that and that I guarantee you someone else wants to read about. And this is a lot easier to do than you might imagine. I'll link to a complete video in the description below, but this process is gonna get you started. For a nonfiction book, start with what you want people to do or, or learn, and then break that down into 10 to 15 tasks, working backwards to that goal. Now, each one of those is gonna be one of your chapters, so you do the same thing within each chapter, breaking it down into a few tasks and instructions for each. Then you focus on just one chapter a week, do not try to sit down and write a book. Just, just do one chapter at a time. Now, this is definitely one way I don't want to shortchange you on the details, so look for that step-by-step -step video that I'll link to in the description. This next passive source, Staking Cryptocurrencies, is another one that I've just started to experiment with and is also one of the most passive on the list. Now, I don't want to get too technical because this really is an easy income source, but there are two ways the blockchain technology works. The proof-of-work model, which is the mining model used by Bitcoin, and then there's the proof of stake model, which validates changes on that shared spreadsheet by putting up tokens as collateral. So when you stake your crypto, you're becoming a part of that process and you get rewarded with more coins. Now to start this individually, you'll need a dedicated computer and a larger account, like at least 32 Ethereum or about 90 grand, but most exchanges like Coinbase are gonna allow you to add your cryptocurrency to a pool of investors and then do all the work for you. Joining a staking pool, you can earn from 5% to as high as 20% a year, depending on the coin and the exchange you use. Rewards for staking are forecasted to top 12.5 billion this year, and JP Morgan expects that to grow to $40 billion by 2025. We've still got five more passive income ideas to highlight, but I wanna get your feedback on this as well. There is a lot of disagreement over what's really passive income, or whether it's something you have to set up with a little work, or if it's totally passive right from the start. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think makes a good passive income source and how much time would you be willing to set it up before it's actually that reoccurring cash flow? Our next group is the biggest yet, from Texas to Florida and New York. Okay, hold up. The only three bedrooms in New York for $1,400 either look like this or it's some tenement under a bowling alley and above a meth lab. Okay, obviously these are statewide averages, but we're still getting up there with an average over $1,250 a month rent, which means you're gonna need to up your passive income game. Vending machines are a $30 billion industry, and that's not including ATMs or touchscreen games, and it is not as hard to set these up as you might think. First, you'll wanna get a rough estimate of the foot traffic around a location to help you estimate yourselves. Then list out all the current vending and food service options in the area. Contact whoever manages the locations to see if they have a contract with the current vendors and how long those contracts go, and especially if they're happy with those vendors. Find out what commission they're getting on those vending sales and what other vending services that you might be able to provide. Machines can cost anywhere from 500 to a few grand and you'll need money to buy inventory, so this isn't something you can start with no money. You'll want at least five machines to make it worth your while, but you can expect between $40 to $70 a week to profit from each machine. Now here you'll also need insurance for theft, vandalism, and just when some Yahoo tips the machine over on themselves. Uh, running everything is pretty easy though. About once a week, you'll check on your machines to restock them, empty the cash box, and refill the coin return, and then wipe down the glass. I wanna give you an online option here as well, so let's look at turning an affiliate website into a source of passive income. An affiliate blog is just a website where your primary source of income is gonna be mentioning products or courses and then getting a commission off the sales of those. The pros here are that you don't have to spend a lot of time creating your own products or your courses. You just partner with other businesses and the products you believe in to promote theirs. Now this can be a great passive income business because once you've got some articles on the blog that are pulling in traffic from Google, and you're gonna get that traffic every single month whether you post new articles or not. You'll get continuous visitors to your blog. A percentage of those visitors are gonna click through your links and, and then buy and you're gonna make thousands a month on very little work. We can go back to my revenue spreadsheet to show you just how much you can make with this. You see, I've averaged just under $20,000 a month through affiliate sales so far this year. That's about a third of my total online income. Now, obviously that's not all passive because I manage my websites and this channel actively as a business, but if I'm doing 20 grand a month, you can definitely make 1,500 to pay your rent. And getting started here is even easier than that vending machine idea. I mean, first, you just pick a topic, something you like talking about like health or money, investing or homeschooling any hobby or interest you might have. Then you create your website and sign up for what's called affiliate networks, which are just websites that connect people with blogs to affiliate partnerships. 
In those affiliate networks like ShareASale or CJ Affiliates, you'll sign up to affiliate programs, which are just individual companies that want to promote their products. And here you'll get a special link that you can use whenever you talk about that product. So if someone clicks on that from your blog, the company's going to track that person and know to give you the commission if they buy. I've got a couple of videos on setting up a blog and affiliate marketing that I'll link to in the video description below. Check those out because whether you're just doing this to pay the rent or want to make it a full-time business, affiliate marketing can be a great income source. Coming in second to last from New Jersey to if you can find it on the map, you can live in Delaware for an average rent of over $1,500 a month. And if our next passive income idea was good enough for George Jefferson, it's good enough for me. And anytime you can get two Jefferson's references in a single video, ladies and gentlemen, that's a good day. Running a laundromat is probably the second highest paying on our list and surprisingly passive. The laundry business is a $5 billion industry in the United States alone, with more than 35,000 laundromats nationwide. According to industry advisor Martin Ray, coin laundry startup costs can typically range from a few thousand to three hundred thousand dollars and generate between 20 to 30 percent return on investment every single year. So startup costs on this one can be a little high, but you can get a loan for the property and the machine operators will usually extend a line of credit for 10 to 15 year terms. And these places can be extremely passive, though you'll still want someone on hand to help the customers. Now, adding additional services like a lounge can help boost your sales and produce an even higher return. I've even seen places that set up with a liquor license so they can make it a bar and laundromat format. And with a margin around 80% for bars, it's easy to see why. Now, I am not going to pretend to be a laundromat expert because this is actually one of the two on the list that I haven't tried yet. So I'm going to defer you to Brandon from the Investment Joy channel on those details. Brandon is the king of the laundromat biz here on YouTube and actually owns three locations. So check out that video that I'll link in the description below. While laundromats can make a massive amount of money, it's also one of the more expensive for startup costs. So I want to highlight virtual conferences here as a less expensive passive income idea. I did a whole video on this a couple of years ago, detailing how a blogger friend made over $6,000 on just one virtual summit. And, and that was before the coronavirus. This is how most conferences and annual events are happening right now, and, and a lot of people actually prefer it that way. It opened up a whole new income source because doing these virtually brings those startup costs down to something that anyone can afford. Now, if you look at this, you can do everything virtually that you could do at a live conference. You invite experts to give 20 to 40 minute presentations, you can record panel discussions, and you present these live on the first day to include questions and answer sessions. And you can sell different levels of tickets to these. You've got one price to attend those live recordings and the QA for the summit, and you can use Zoom or any video conferencing platform to manage this. Then you can sell another level of tickets for access to the recorded summit. So maybe people that couldn't watch live or that want that recorded version. You sell these as a video course on Teachable. Beyond those ticket sales, you can also sell sponsorships to companies for brief promos during the presentations and mentions on social media. I've participated in two of these as a speaker and they make so much money. Honestly, even a small virtual conference can easily make $10,000 for the organizer and that's profit after paying affiliates and speakers. Understand though, unlike a lot of these income ideas, it's going to take up to six months to put one of these together and then all your money comes in over one or two months. So this is one you're going to need to plan further in advance. Last group here with an average rent over $2,000 a month for a three bedroom and you know what? Just move. Seriously, I know you islanders love your sunsets, but for $2,000 a month, move to Iowa and get a can of spray tan. But if you're really set on where you live, I've got one last passive income idea that can make the big bucks. And that's why franchising is so popular. When you buy a franchise, you pay a startup fee to an established business for everything you need, including how to set your business up, equipment you'll need, a local marketing budget, and a brand that people already know. More than 90% of the 37,000 McDonald's locations are franchises, and other examples include Marriott Hotels and Ace Hardware. These are all franchise businesses you can buy and run your store locally. How this falls into the passive income space is that so much of this is done for you, and few franchisees actually manage their stores on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, there is a price for having your entire business set up for you, though. Besides that startup fee, which can range from $10,000 for smaller franchises to over a million dollar commitment for a McDonald's, you typically have a per month commission on your sales you have to pay into that corporate owner as well. A franchise can still be extremely profitable though. McDonald's owners are estimated to average around $150,000 a year, and that's after paying all the staff to run the place. Profitability margins shown here by Sageworks range from 1.5% of sales for car dealerships to over 10% profit on sales for hotel businesses. Check out the videos linked in the description for more passive income ideas, or click on the video to the right for those seven monthly dividend stocks to pay your rent. 
Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.